First of all, I'd like to welcome you to my tactical operations center, or what I call my green room. And today I'm gonna to show you what I'm gonna pack for the Lake Stephanie bushwhack. I will start with the clothes that I'm gonna wear the day that I'm leaving for the bushwhack. So I've got my boonie cap, my trusty boonie cap, my schmog, which this combined with the boonie cap can be a, a warm weather hat. So I don't have to bring in an extra hat on this one. Then I go to my body. I've got a long sleeve, breathable uh, shirt, my Summit Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, cotton shirt. Shouldn't probably bring cotton, but this is my lucky shirt and I like to bring it to me with me to the woods. Uh, then I've got gloves for my hands, belt, shorts, knife, long underwear, knee pads, socks, and boots. As extra gear that I will bring for, for clothing, I'm bringing my North Face jacket that's waterproof and warm. And that's the majority of my warmth that I have right here in this, in this coat. I always bring this orange long sleeve shirt. Got it at uh, Goodwill, it's an REI, and it's great to sleep in. I keep this and another pair of long johns always dry, and that's what I'll sleep in. So I always have something to dry if I'm having to dry all this stuff when it's wet. And then also, if something does turn into an emergency or I do turn into a survival situation, then this becomes my outside shirt. Very visible and can be seen from a long distance. Then I have my rain pants, two extra pairs of socks. On Lake Stephanie's bushwhack, since it will be Father's Day, I am bringing my father's Korean War issue wool socks and I will wear them all day on Father's Day. So that is the clothes that I will be bringing. Now we're gonna get into equipment. The one thing missing right now is, is the dried food. I add my food and all that at the very last second. Let's start with the pack I'm bringing. I'm bringing a 30 cubic inch, uh, basically a day pack, but this is kind of a, a rugged version day pack. Um, I like to, in a bushwhack, I like to keep it because you're trying to fit through tight spaces and you just don't want too much weight on your back anyway. And if the bigger pack you bring, you will fill it and then you will have more weight. So we'll start with this pack. Then I'm bringing my rope and Swiss seat. I've got three different snap links to go with this. Start at the top, I'm bringing my water bladder. Now one of the features of this water bladder I really like is it comes with a separate cap. So I can leave this attached to my outside of my pack where it always is when I take this out to go filter water with my water filter, then I can use this cap and it's, it's just a much easier fare. You don't have to worry about getting this all dirty in the, uh, in the rocks and everything or allowing it to wash downstream. I always bring my first aid kit. This is a pretty good extensive small first aid kit can pretty much handle anything that I know how to handle. I have my emergency location beacon. I even have my brand new sticker for it. I just got renewed for another two years through NOAA, who controls the satellite that will pick up the signal if I'm in trouble. And like in, in military, most military equipment all has directions written on it. So if you pick something up and it's other something you've never seen, you can usually read on it and figure out how to use it. Well, I keep quick instructions on this in case it's not me using it, or in case under the stress, I don't remember how to use it. So this is my prototype survival kit. We'll get into this a little bit later, but this is pretty much, I can survive and will survive off of this for five days. And it's, maybe a pound and a half. Over here, most important toilet paper. And this is a, a new pickup I got. It's a $10 Black & Decker trowel. And it came with a serrated edge on one side and a knife edge on the other and on the front. Well, I took it to a tool sharpening place and they did a pretty good job at, at sharpening it. So it's really easy to dig your poop hole in. Um, and it's cheap, it's pretty light. Uh, so far, it's the purchase of the year. I have my binoculars, very important tool whenever you're in the backcountry. A lot harder to use in the peninsula, but 
one of the most important tools we had in staying safe in Alaska. Uh, glassing an area before you enter it, looking for wildlife, looking for movement, can, can really save you in a, in a trouble situation. Got a walkie-talkie. Basically, I think this is a 10 mile, they're not the greatest thing, but they do have an emergency channel on it. And when we're bushwhacking with other folks, it's very important. Go farther down, got a pad of paper and a pen. I've got my map in a bag and my compass. This is my bivy sack. It's pretty super lightweight. And I've got a blanket. Combine this with pine boughs and or other debris and I can stay as warm as I need to be. This is also both my father's Korean War issue canteen cup and his issue canteen. This is where I keep my burger. Got a little high-tech spoon with some tools on it, a little snap link. As far as equipment, the only thing I didn't cover <coughs> is my slingshot. And you would think, you know, I'm not gonna be doing a bunch of hunting, but I'll show you techniques later that this is very, very valuable in uh, hanging bare wires or even possibly climbing a, a tree that doesn't have branches uh, for quite a ways up it. Also, I'm bringing, this is my Bible of the, the Olympic Peninsula. This is, Ev, it's a field guide by a scientist from Simon Fraser University over in BC. And it's color pictures and explanations and uses by the different uh, native tribes of every plant from basically the Alaska, from the Alaska coast all the way to the Oregon coast. And most everything in this book can be found in the Olympic Peninsula. And so that would be the extent of the equipment that I'm bringing. Okay, so now I'm gonna pack Charlie. This has been a whole new packing challenge for me uh, and picking gear for, for my dog friend. This was his first coat and it is pretty much gonna be retired. Um, this thing was a complete dress on him when he got it at four months. But as you see, it's, it's pretty much lost any kind of water capability, waterproof capabilities. When he goes to sleep at night, this is kind of his sleeping coat. Got a couple poop sacks right here. This is his saddlebag pack, his leash, which is kind of very important. You know, if we start getting into an area that he doesn't like and he lets us know, I'll put him on a leash. And so that way, you know, if he goes over a cliff, I go with him. Because I'm not coming home without him, that's for sure. Uh, then we got his food. And this is a great way for him to carry his food. And it also kind of slows him down a little bit on the trail. And he's just not running wild. It keeps him a little bit more focused in the actual hike. As far as food, I got a couple days worth of uh, kibble. I got his favorite rawhide treats. And then I have this uh, Evanger's uh, wet food. And he will get a can, when we're out in the field, he gets a can of this, a full can at, at night. If I'm going into bear country, I will keep this in the can until we use it. Um, if I'm not in real heavy bear country, then I might put this in the individual bags uh, and seal it up right before we go. And that way it's much lighter on him and we don't have quite the, the amount of waste. He gets a, a, a definitely a variety. He gets rabbit, he gets uh, pheasant, buffalo, and wild salmon on this trip. One thing that I've done with Charlie is, is really establish a, a, a treat regimen when I have certain calls. And this is the most important one he's learned and it's it worked really well. I mean, if he's a ways away, or he's busy, or he's even doing things that uh, I'm not happy with. I can call this. So far, 80% of the time, he he shows up and, and reports for duty. Patoon dog post. Attention. Present paw. Right paw, soldier. Good boy. Sit. Sit. Say good boy. Good boy. Okay. I'm not gonna make you carry this all day. Just part of the day. You ready? Good boy. That's a good boy. I'll go with the fish trap. Okay, I'm gonna do 
your back strap. Oh, I touched your penis. I'm sorry. Yeah, there we go. Now we're. What do you think? <laughs> You're not too happy about it. No, we're not going to do this to you yet. You'll get your fill of that.